Hello and welcome to Adams. My name is James O'Halloran and today I'm going to talk to you about our current online auction which is a collection of 217 paintings by the late Fergus O'Ryan RHA. Um, the theme of the auction is travel, uh, something that uh, we haven't done an awful lot of in the last year, most of us anyway. Um, and what's interesting about Fergus O'Ryan is that while most of us associate him with painting in, in and around the Greater Dublin area, um, he was an incredible traveller, uh, visited all over Europe and painted everywhere he went. But he also uh, did quite a lot of hill walking in County Wicklow and was also a frequent visitor to Connemara. So the first one here that we have is a view, um, an unidentified view, but I suspect that it's somewhere up around Parnell Square. And again, it's in the, uh, this, this park, very typical of the way that he uh, composes his uh, pictures, that a lot of his pictures, you see the subject matter through trees. Uh, and this is a little bit unusual in as much as it has these figures in, in uh, uh, enjoying a walk in the, in the park. Below it here is a much more typical view of a canal scene uh, somewhere along the Grand Canal, probably in Dublin 4. Uh, but again, it, it, another example of where the trees are pretty prominent in the composition, but obviously the main part of it here is the, uh, uh, the canal lock and the bridge. So moving on, we've got a few examples of his paintings from Connemara, uh, again, beautifully painted. And I should just mention that while a lot of the pictures in this video are framed, there's a lot of pictures which, when they came from the studio, were not framed. So what we've done is that we've done stage one of a framing, which is that we've put this simple uh, grey painted timber slip. So basically, if you purchase any of these, the thing to do is then bring it to your framer and then get the outer frame put on uh, to your own taste. And uh, so again, what's, what's lovely about these Connemara pictures, and you see it in a lot of the work, is that these very pale, uh, sandy foreground and also these lovely skies so the almost white sand is reflected in the, uh, the the treatment of the sky gives it a lovely light airy feel and in this particular one with those marvelous uh, currucks uh, and plenty of activity going on a figure heading out into the sea uh, in his currock there and um, so as I mentioned um, a minute ago he was himself in May his wife were uh, very keen hikers. And what they used to do was that they would travel from their home in Bird Avenue in Clonski and head down in the bus to Blessington where they would alight the bus with all their gear, his painting gear, and very often they would travel with their camping gear. And they would head over the Wicklow Mountains from Blessington, heading towards the sea, and sometimes spend as many as four or five days on that particular trek. And while, while they were doing the walking, uh, you know, they would stop when they saw something nice and he would paint the subject uh, that you can see here, this kind of uh, sort of a river landscape um, somewhere in the Wicklow Mountains. So back in the, the 1950s and 60s, they did a lot of traveling in Europe, um, which for uh, a lot of people at that time was not a common thing to do. Um, this was painted in uh, the area around uh, Cadiz in uh, southern Spain and again you see very much that sort of the, the influence of the intense light that you get in south of Spain um, and again this, these, these lovely bleached, almost bleached skies uh, and the treatment here of the, uh, the village or the town of Zahara. Um, against the backdrop of the uh, the big mountains there. So underneath, then back to uh, to Dublin again. Another lovely little uh, scene on the Grand Canal just at Bagot Street. So moving slightly further afield, uh, this is an example of one of his Venetian scenes. It's a palazzo on the Grand Canal. Again, it's got uh, the uh, ubiquitous uh, gondola. And the gondolier. Um, but what's lovely about it is the reflection of the building in the in the water. He was very he was very keen on reflections and uh, was an extremely competent painter of water, which is 
an incredibly difficult um, uh, thing to be able to capture successfully. Um, so the one below it here is back to Ireland. It's a view of uh, Roundstone in Connemara. And this is this one beside it is also uh, another view of Roundstone from a slightly different, different direction. This is down in the harbour. Um, and again, it's um, beautiful quality. It's reminiscent of uh, a number of other painters' work. Uh, and speaking of, of that, um, I have an example here of one of his South of France uh, paintings, which reminds me of the work of Mary Swansea. There's a sort of, uh, a, quite a nice sort of almost cubist treatment of the, uh, the, the houses in the landscape and this beautiful treatment of the trees uh, framing the, uh, the, the, the subject, which again is something that we see time and time again. Um, so up here um, we've got a scene from, it's a, uh, a graveyard in central Paris and below it is a view of uh, the harbour at in Santorini, one of the Greek islands. Again, brilliantly uh, captured this sort of treatment of, you know, rendering the, uh, the, the, the white painted uh, structures Harsh, partially blue, which again reflect are reflective of the intense light, but also the uh, the wonderful colour that emanates from from the sea. So again, great um, example of one of his Greek island pictures. Um, so coming back here again, we're sort of looking at uh, pictures from his trekking over the uh, Wicklow Mountains. That's at the start of one of his his treks. This is the River Liffey. Uh, near um, Hazel Hatch, and then these are just sort of uh, fairly uh, straightforward um, views in the Wicklow Mountains, and again with the uh, uh, the River Liffey, because it obviously it rises in the Wicklow Mountains before it heads off into Dublin. And so um, Spain was a country that he absolutely adored, and he spent a great deal of time in the uh, islands of Ibiza and Mallorca, but this one is painted in Sitges um, in Spain, on the mainland in Spain. Um, this is also another Spanish uh, view, it's an estuary scene, it's painted in watercolour, uh, again with the figures uh, resting and um, doing some repairs to the, uh, uh, the fishing nets, etc. Uh, but again, beautifully painted. This is a work from, I would suspect, probably sometime in the 1950s or the early 60s. In the corner here, we have a nice collection of uh, watercolours, uh, all individually framed, nicely framed actually, and they range from Dublin scenes um, to ones in Wicklow, but also in Ibiza and in Mallorca. So again, it gives you a sort of a nice idea of the kind of work that Fergus um, was producing. Again, everywhere he went, he brought his painting gear and so these small little watercolours would have been in a pad and he would have just quite simply sat down and knocked out uh, these sketches, these watercolour sketches very, very quickly. And I think that's the wonderful thing about them is that he captures the essence of the scene very easily. Uh, he was such a, um, an accomplished painter um, that he didn't need to overwork a lot of his, his pictures, uh, but yet he captures the atmosphere and the essence of the uh, the place that he was painting. And so this very large work gives you an idea of the kind of scale that he can paint at. This very large picture is a view of the 12 pins um, in uh, Connemara, and it's a view from Cala uh, on, on the coast looking over towards the mountains. And again, it's got this lovely sort of little uh, uh, humble cottage, thatch cottage and the couple of um, Kirks and some figures there. So the whole thing, it's a very dramatic picture painted in oil and canvas uh, laid down onto board. So uh, again, very, very accomplished. And again, this wonderful sort of treatment of the dramatic sky with the sort of the sense of fleeting clouds racing across the uh, horizon. So the auction takes place next Wednesday. The online catalogue is live on our website, adams.ie. It's important to mention that the auction is unreserved, so that means that there's no reserves. The estimates start for 
uh, some of the watercolors at about 100 euro and they go up to about a thousand for some of the larger oil paintings so there's great value to be had the proceeds of the auction have been very gener generously donated to Our Lady's Hospice. So can I suggest that you go on our website, view the catalogue in, in its entirety, register to become a bidder and get bidding.